89.3 WNUR FM, Evanston, Chicago, Chicago Sound Experiment. My name is Eric Richards, the host of this program, and I'm joined, as always, by my illustrious co-host, Joe Miscellonis. How'd I get those vowels, Joe? You've got them right, as always, Eric. And also a special guest, uh, Ryan, in the studio. Hey, Ryan, how's it going? Good, man. Thanks for letting me co-host. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pleasure. So, so, uh, so, Ryan, this is your first time on the air with this show. Yes. Now, a lot of, t- a lot of our listeners are paranoid schizophrenics <laughs> so so <laughs> when a new voice kind yeah. of shows up comes in they're nervous yeah so maybe you could kind of allay their fears a little bit and and tell our audience a little bit about yourself and your interest in uh, you know radio what's your background well i have been a talk radio geek probably since fourth grade i've been that kid where when i'm walking around with my ipod in the hallways i'm not listening to music i'm listening to podcasts I've always been a talk radio geek. Such shows as Opie and Anthony, Rover's Morning Glory, Steve Dahl, all these the guys. Man Cow. Back in the day on Q1, yes. Yeah. Now he's a sellout. But I'm more of a guy that likes that type of edgy talk radio, if you know what I'm saying. And I do. I've always been into it. I hosted a show on Harper College Radio, 88.3 um, WHCM, from September to February. And I hosted two shows on there. And I even got DJ Moore from the Bears to call in. And now I host a podcast online, so pretty much I'm 19 years old, just trying to push my way into the radio business a day at a time. Excellent. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, 847-866-WNUR is our number here. 847-866-968. Out of the way. So I am, I am curious. Now, now Ryan, you're, you're younger than, than we are. Yeah. And um, it, Well, it, not too much younger than well, I Well, now come either. on. Come on now. <laughs> We, we <laughs> so you're the young you're the younger generation. Uh, have you know what what's it like among people your age? How do they feel about gay marriage? Just just gut reaction. Everyone just seems so sick of this debate. I mean, if someone loves somebody, they should have the right to get married and go through the cere- through the ceremony and everything that a normal heterosexual couple goes through. When I saw this on the Huffington Post, when I was looking for material for my podcast, incredible, yeah. Well, yeah, I know they're a little bit biased, but... No, no, I, I'm, I'm, but go on, go on. But when I saw that that got passed, I could not have been happier because I just want this to become legal. Gays should know different than us. Just because they're attracted to the same sex, at the end of the day, who cares? They're human beings at the end of the day. And I hate this idea where you hear, well, they could possibly make it uncomfortable for the kids that they adopt. I'm pretty sure gay people might be better parents than the 17-year-old girls that are getting pregnant. So at the end of the day, Eric, I am so glad that this got passed because America, the economy, does not seem to be going up. There are a lot of problems in these bad neighborhoods. There's so much that needs to be fixed that having an argument in the Supreme Court over should gays be allowed to get married and put a wedding finger or put a wedding ring on their finger, having all these debates over it, who cares? Let them get married. Yeah, it's just annoying. Well, no, I, I... Here's what I think. I think in 10 years, you will see everyone going to the gay pride parade. Because when you think of a parade, it's very boring. You throw candy into the crowd. You see very annoying politicians. Klondike bars sometimes. Yeah, trying to promote themselves, these politicians that try to fit in. The gay pride parade is just about being gay. I mean, at the end of the day, what does it matter if you are attracted to a male or a female of the same sex? I mean, it just looks like a fun time. I'm telling you, in 10 years, this will be the biggest party in all of every city that it's in. I just think we are seeing a movement now where you see people who are heterosexual going to the gay pride parade because now people are so sick of debating if um, gays should be allowed to get married that they're just now accepting it. And now being gay is mainstream, just like you said. I mean, one of the top shows on TV is Modern Family. Yeah. And their main characters are gay. So I just think this is a really good thing for America because we're finally kind of going away from the whole idea where it's weird to be gay. It's normal now to be gay. I'm heterosexual, but I have I have family members and friends who are gay, and it doesn't bother me. They're nice people. They're fun to be around. It just I'm I'm glad this is happening because I think now we can finally put it underneath the rug, let them get married, and try and look at the problems that America has that need to be fixed. If that makes sense. It does. It does. And I yeah you know, I think that's that's certainly well said. And a lot of people agree with it. Yeah. Uh, you are the other big news from the last week uh, on a slightly lesser scale, I guess, is uh, Aaron Hernandez. Yes, now, this is the f- now oh, former boy. 
the now former uh, running back. What, what position? Uh, is tight end. Tight end. Same thing. Uh, tight end for the New England Patriots. Not anymore. He's been charged with murder. Yes. And uh, he is done. Yeah, I think so. I he, think so. He uh, he definitely murdered a dude. Uh, like almost like I'm like a hundred percent sure he definitely murdered. The a evidence dude. is damning. It's it's pretty it's pretty substantial. I mean, so first of all. He destroyed the cameras around his house. Oh, boy. Um, he hired a cleaning crew the day after the murder took place. Um, he was last seen with the victim. He was arguing with the victim the night before. He was seen carrying guns. Uh, he had a rental car that had a shell casing in it along with uh, blue bubble gum, which he was chewing the day of the murder. He definitely murdered this guy. I'm, I'm 100% sure. And apparently now the news is... He is now being pursued for a double homicide or triple homicide. There are some other allegations from 2012, from like last July, that he may or may not be involved in. But the reason is that's the motive. Apparently, apparently, this guy knew about this. This is what the cops are saying. He knew about the 2012 triple murder and was going to like flip on Hernandez or something, or he was going to like confess and he was going to like give away Hernandez as being involved in this triple murder, and that's why Aaron Hernandez killed him. So. It's a pretty crazy score, Dory. And when you consider the fact the guy's making millions of dollars a year. 40 million bucks. You're making millions of dollars a year and you murder a dude. First of all, hire someone to do it. Well, I, I, I don't mean, understand why you want to hire someone. To be fair, Idi um, Amin was making a lot of money, too. He was murdering people. So yeah, a, I mean, a precedent. He, he got away with it for many years, yeah, though, Eric. Aaron they made Hernandez, a movie, yeah, but they made a movie about he, him. Less than a week later, Aaron Hernandez was arrested. I mean, well, it's a little bit different. Yeah, where's the double standard? <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, why is no one going after Idi Amin anymore, I guess? <laughs> yeah, he's dead. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, listen listen to this now. The, the Odin Lloyd's the guy's name who died. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, this, the, I'm learning this from the, the snitch. Chicago Tribune. Uh, on the night of the murder, uh, Lloyd sent a text message to his sister saying, quote, Did you see who I am with? End quote. Uh, she asked who, and Lloyd answered at 3.22 a.m. Uh, with just the word NFL. And then a minute later... In his final text, quote, just so you know, NFL, just so you know. Ah. It's very eerie. And I mean, how could that be talking about anyone else? <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah. I, you know, and I don't know if this sort of evidence could get, get in at a, at a trial. I mean, I don't know how you could read that, given the connection between the, the two guys and think that that uh, Hernandez has been wrongfully. He was literally set for life, Joe. I yeah. mean, Every girl wants him. You can literally walk anywhere in New England. Anyone can buy you lunch. You're making forty million bucks. He has he had four sponsors. You're playing on one of the best teams in the NFL. You have the one of the best quarterbacks ever in Tom Brady throwing passes to you. But here's what happened. He was involved in gangs as teenagers, so they said he was constantly paranoid that they would come back and say, Yo, bro, can you give me a few bucks? Remember when I used to help you back in the day? Yeah. So he constantly had to look behind his back. And I think the paranoia just drove him mad. And this is a sad case because he was really good for the Patriots. I mean, everyone talks about Rob Gronkowski, but he was more healthier and more consistent because Rob was always hurt. But if I, f- if I hear one more person who feels bad for Aaron... No way. Who, who have you actually know, heard I'm that? Actually, there are people on Twitter trying to proclaim his innocence, saying he wouldn't do it. The guy did it. He's a dumb football jock. Why do you think he got the cleaning crew to come to his house? And this wasn't a little bit of a cleaning crew helping clean up a few of the things in the house. This, they came over there to completely clean everything out. If you didn't do it, why do you have to have your whole house completely remodeled and cleaned out? Something is up there. I think this guy will go to jail, Joe and Eric. I just think he's done. We will never well, he, see him walk on the football been, field he again. He has been cut by the which which is unprecedented because they yeah. basically still have to pay him. Kind of, but they, they well, think, they prob- they, it's I, unclear. They could probably get out of it. They could probably say he murdered a dude. Well, I d- but I don't know if, <laughs> if that's a reason he to avoid it. He was being economy. paid forty million, but that's not guaranteed. Just eight million of it is, yeah. and all that's going to go to lawyer fees and whatever. So. Even if he is found innocent, no one's going to want to give this guy a job. So if he were to be found innocent, he has a lot of work to do. Within this two-day window, you could exchange it for another player. If you had an Aaron Hernandez jersey, would you exchange it or would you keep it? Well, I, I would exchange it. You don't see people wearing O.J. Simpson jerseys around. It's not very fashionable. Hipsters might. <laughs> Brian, what, what do you say? Would you, would you keep it or, or, cha- or trade it in? 
I think I would trade it in because it's not a good look to walk around like bars or anywhere downtown wearing a Aaron Hernandez jersey, the same guy who murdered someone. This isn't like some like weird guy like let's say Monte Teo who had the fake girlfriend. That's more of a funny jersey. But I feel like if you're seen walking around wearing an Aaron Hernandez jersey, it just has like a weird, morbid feel to it. So yeah, I would either turn it in or I could see crazy people who are diehard Patriot fans who take sports way too seriously. I could see them like burning it and trying to get attention on YouTube videos. Trust me, we will see a few where there are crazy fans crying that he wasted his opportunity and we will see some burned Aaron Hernandez jerseys on YouTube. I think so. Uh but I, I would say Ray Lewis jerseys are in abundance, and that was suspicious well, with that guy. Well, he was, yeah, he well was. come on now. <laughs> it's controversial. It, no, one, no one knows for sure. Yeah. And I, I think maybe if he wasn't an NFL player uh, and, and if he wasn't a star, uh, maybe different treatment. I don't know, but, but people, I think people just put that aside. They don't want to think about it. It's just kind of like a weird topic, and just because he's the best linebacker of all time doesn't mean he didn't do it and my friend who's been to Baltimore says you can't walk to every block without seeing at least five Ray Lewis jerseys so what if and Aaron six dead bodies yes <laughs> especially if you watch the wire and um what if Aaron Hernandez were to be found innocent do you think that we could see him redeem himself and fans rejoicing him if he were to get back into shape or do you think he's just screwed and he'll be going to jail what's your take no Eric? he's never gonna get redeemed this I, is I not a. Yeah, well, this is not a. People never thought Vick. Ray Lewis would get redeemed, or how about Kobe Bryant, but who allegedly? I'm just saying, crazier things have happened. What if? That's true. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I buy who that. Who would have thought that Kobe Bryant would have come back after winning three with Shaq when that wasn't his team, and he's won two rings, and now everyone loves him. I'm just saying, I don't think he will get redeemed because the evidence is very much there, unlike let's say the Kobe Bryant case, but. Crazier things have happened. I could see diehard fans being like, "Come to our team, Aaron. We need you." I mean, come on. Yeah, or at least like an NFL, like a, the the Canada NFL. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, CFL. Yeah, they they would do it. Yeah, uh, go have fun in Toronto, buddy. Six nine six eight seven. You're listening to the disorder on eighty nine point three WNUR, uh, and the other big story, of course, uh, of, of celebrities f- uh, falling to, to the depths. Yes. Uh, we have Paula Dean. Oh boy. And uh, she's the. Uh, Guess, annoying famous. cooking lady on the, yeah, the Food cooking lady, the annoying cooking lady, the the celebrity chef. Uh, she also owns a bunch of restaurants, has a cookware uh, operation where she sells a bunch of d- different types of, of cookware. I've actually been to her restaurant in Savannah. Uh, she you know ch- champions Southern cooking, and in a dep- in a deposition, I'm sure everyone's heard this, but in a deposition, uh, she both used the N word and said that she had used the N word in her in her life. People found out about it, and now all of the sponsors are leaving her, including Sears, Kmart. And Walgreens, Walmart, or Walgreens too, as well. Yeah, so everything Wall, and plus uh, she's also, uh, I guess her cookbook is. Uh, they're not going to order any more. There's, there's something with that. So she's, she's fallen fast. Is this, is this an overreaction, or what kind of your, your, your uh, gut feeling on this? Is guys? it surprising that a Southern woman would use the N word? I mean, I guess that's sort of no, an older, it's not Southern white it's woman. Not surprising would use not the N word. I guess that's, a, that's the thing. It's like she didn't. Say it like it. She didn't like say it on the show or anything. I guess I don't know. I guess it's it seems like a gross over exaggeration that now her entire life has fallen apart because she at some point in the past when that was exactly I don't know. It was like in the it was like in the late 1970s. She said, "Yeah, I mean, she used it when she was what a teenager or something." Like we're gonna just judge everyone based on what happened. 30 years ago in their life. I mean, it just seems ridiculous that now her entire life has fallen apart. I mean, she, if she doesn't use the N-word now, if she is not <laughs> grossly discriminating against African Americans at her restaurants or at her cookbooks, if her cookbooks aren't N-word laden, then I don't really understand. <laughs> I don't think they are. Yeah. I actually heard a sound clip where she was being interviewed and like her... um. Her cab driver was in the back. Yeah. And she was like, come on up. I can't see you right when you're by the chalkboard. Because he was like fitting in. And everyone uncomfortably laughed. So I do think she was racist. Because when I heard that comment. She was or is? She is. Or prob- probably is now. Because I don't know if you saw the interview on Matt Lauer. 
I, I didn't I didn't see it. I knew she was on the Today Show. Talk about fake crying, yeah. trying to make everyone feel bad for you. I don't think she feels bad that she said the word or possibly hurt the feelings of her employees. She feels bad that she's not making money anymore and that she's caught. It just seemed like someone who's full of herself and is mad that everyone found out. I don't know, but if, at the same time, I feel like if I was... To let's say Northwestern were to kick me out of the school <laughs> for something I said when I was eight years old, I would be mad about it too. And no, I wouldn't be mad about I offended someone with my eight year old comment. I'd be mad that they kicked me out because of something that happened 13 years ago. For well, her, it's but 30. More but, these are, things. but these are sponsors who, yeah. who you know, if, if she's hated by the society, not saying that she is, but if she, if she were, then these sponsors would be losing money because but, of it. This is this. Let's slow down here a second. Walmart, yeah, sells assault rifles. You know, I let's and not. Walmart <laughs> continued to sell assault rifles after the Sandy Hook massacre. Yeah, so Walmart, two people very much like Paula Deen. So, so, and I don't know if you've ever been to a Walmart like in the in the in like North Carolina. They are full of racist rednecks. So I don't exactly. know why Walmart had to pull it, guys. I mean, they're yeah. obviously this is their clientele, it. right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like Walmart is saying, basically, that you should buy an assault rifle, and that it that a massacre of school children is not enough for them to not sell assault rifles. That that the profits from assault rifles are so good, it doesn't matter how many kids are going to die. But you say one N word. And we're pulling all I your cookbooks it, off the I shelves. I don't think it's one. Yeah, well, I, I think it was kind of a. a there a was a recent clip thing. where she made that uncomfortable comment. I mean, mm-hmm. I do think in the next coming weeks we are going to hear more and more about um, people trying to get on like 60 Minutes, trying to say how she was rude to them. I'm just saying I don't think it's just been one time she said it when she had a gun to her head. She's in a lot of trouble. If everyone said rude comments and made people uncomfortable. I mean, everyone over the age of 60 would not have a job. Well, that and that raises a good point. Now, if this were your grandmother, right? I mean, if, if because the older generation, yeah. a lot of times they don't know what's acceptable, especially in the South. If it was a relative, would this change the way you think about them, or would you just be like, oh, well, they're just older, they say crazy things? Right, yeah. I mean, I actually, No, go on, sorry. I was just going to say, yeah, I mean, just a different generation. Listen, they're, they grew up in a different time where things... You you had different words that are are now considered offensive, meant knucklehead or something. You know it, they just or moron. They like, lived in a different N-word. time. I mean, this is like, but from the south, from the southern, the N word is basically is like basically like dude. I mean, they just throw it around all the time down there, especially back when she grew up in like the nineteen sixties. I mean, I'm not saying it, it, that makes it acceptable. I'm just saying if she's not actively discriminating against black people if she's if her actions haven't harmed anyone i don't understand why we're stripping her away of her entire life well but but again we are not these individual companies are making the decision now i agree that's a double standard especially with with walmart um but i mean obviously they have that that right i mean i think as a society we need to be more forgiving she seems like a nice woman yeah I mean, it's, it, it, this is not and and to be honest you have michael jackson <laughs> Who right. very probably was doing illegal things with yes. with kids, and everyone loves the guy. Right. And here Paula Dean is vilified. Exactly. But she but she puts it on herself because she has that annoying southern personality where she makes meals where every teaspoon is one thousand calories. I mean, this isn't like a woman that like contributes to, to society. Every one of her meals are some of the worst things that could give you a heart attack. I that's, agree. That's why she has diabetes, because yeah. every one of her meals has like four pounds of butter. Yeah. I mean, that's why I think everyone's kind of glad this happened to her, because yeah. she's like, people howdy, want- y'all. How's it going, <laughs> Jay Leno? It's like, shut up. People, yeah, yeah. people want her to, have to, people want her to die. That's what, <laughs> they, they hate her so much, just because <laughs> her, her food is so fatty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You want to call the show 847-866-9687 847-866-WNUR. Oh Very God. good. Show us. The the uh, so so right, are you are you from uh, this area? Yes, I'm so, from. So are you a Blackhawks fan? I know I'm going to sound like the guy who ruins the fun, but I just I can't get into hockey. I'm glad they won. I mean, I'm glad they beat Boston. Everyone on Twitter's been accusing me of hating on the Blackhawks. I just hate it on these fair weather fans who put in capital letter posts, goal, Kaner, score. It's like they, they could be talking about the fire. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> drunk with the goal. Yeah. But it's just like there's this weird mentality where the first tweet after they won it by one of my friends, it wasn't congrats to the Blackhawks, you had a good year. It wasn't yes, Chicago gets another another. Guess what it was, Eric? I, I don't know. I can't wait to go to the parade to get drunk as heck. <laughs> well, that's that's yeah. usually the. And it was just kind of like that's the first thing you're gonna say. That's when you know you're a bandwagon fan. And then I called someone out. Or I called out all the Blackhawk fans for being bandwagoners at the parade when I was on my couch all grumpy. And then they, did they unfollow you after that? <laughs> there was one girl who subtweeted me, and she's like, if you're complaining about all the Blackhawk fans who might be bandwagoners, you're worse than, you're worse than them, and shut up. You're ugly. And I'm like, thanks. It's really nice of you. But it's just like, come on. Like... I just wish this was the Cubs or the Bulls or the Bears, a team I root for. I just feel left out that it's the one sport I don't watch. But trust me, I'm happy they won. Thank God Boston didn't win. Those annoying fans. Yeah. And it was a, it was Thank a pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. I had a lot of fun. Yeah. If you want to tweet at me during the week, sure. at Ryan Hoppy Show, go to my website, ryanhoppyshow.weebly.com and hoppymedia.weebly.com. There's my shameless plug. Well, hey, spell that out so people... Uh Spell, spell your name out so people know. R Y A N H O P P E show on Twitter. Ryan Hoppy Show. Weebly. W E E B L Y dot com. And Hoppy Media. Weebly dot com. And shoot me an email if you want to become a part of the network. You have a nice, edgy talk show. You want to try and get something of this online. Because podcasts, Eric, are the future of radio. And I think we need to help build this. Shoot me an email. R. H O P P E nine at yahoo.com. Yeah, excellent, and and I agree with uh, that sentiment about.